is a presentation of Real Wise Productions and Comey Media Incorporated. What does classless really mean? Next on Mentality. Welcome to another installment of Mentality, the place where we do this show and we sharpen each other as iron sharpens iron in the area of health, mental health, wealth, entrepreneurship, love, and brotherhood from a man's perspective. I am one of the co-hosts of this program, Cole Johnson, and I am joined as always by the other half, the other co-host of this show, Mr. Wise El Jefe. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, brother. How are you? Man, I cannot complain. I cannot complain. Hugh Jackman. Now, you may somewhat know the name, may not know the name. He, of course, is most famously known for playing Logan in the Wolverine and the X-Men stories. And moved. Well, this week he revealed that he recently underwent two biopsies after his doctor said to him that he was concerned about potential basal cell carcinoma. What does that mean? It's a type of skin cancer that he might have contract contracted. Now, the actor shared in the video on social media Monday that his doctor recently saw little things that could be this and it could not be that, but uh, the doctor doesn't know. But the actor who appeared to be wearing a bandage on his nose in the video also reminded fans and viewers to take said precaution of wearing sunscreen as summer months approach. Now, my uh, question to you, sir, is um, how important is applying sunscreen for you? Um, I don't, I hate being in the sun. <laughs> Firstly, I don't like being hot, man. So, um, <laughs> only time I go put sunscreen on is when I go to the beach or go to the. If I know I'm gonna be at the pool, if I know I'm gonna be outside, like outside, outside in the sun, and then I'll put some sunscreen on. But other than that, I don't be outside like that, especially when it's hot and the sun is out. Us fat boys don't <laughs> don't do too well in the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the sun either. I'm not the biggest fan of being outside myself. But when I have to be, I try uh, to put sunscreen on. And I know the prevailing opinion is, well, you know, we got melanin. We don't really need to put on that sunscreen. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, like I said, if I know I'm going to be out in the sun a long time, yes. If I know it's going to be dipping in and out, I'm going to my, I'm in my car most of the time. Yeah. yeah. Now, alcohol. Now, we know that it's a, I guess you say it's an impediment if it's abused. But would you consider it a drug? Now, it's a significant part of our society, obviously, you know, like champagnes associated with weddings, graduations, birthdays, and New Year. And, you know, wine is also uh, given as a gift and is opened after a long day of relax. And binge drinking, of course is a college tradition as well as military traditions. But alcohol is socially acceptable and even encouraged in society. However, the substance abuse 
and Mental Health Services Administration in 2020 found that half of Americans aged 12 and over used alcohol in the past month. So I ask this. Why do we as a society view alcohol as a rite of passage? Because we <laughs> fools. <laughs> that's, that's why. <laughs> we fools. That's why. It is, listen. <laughs> we know the effects of what alcohol can do to the to the body, to the to the mental, to everything. Mm-hmm. And and yet people people just abuse it. There people there's people who can't go without drinking. My brother's a big example of that. He's his yeah. gas is a liver and he still wants to drink. Yeah. So it's it's an addiction. So if it's if you can get addicted to it, then yeah, it's a drug. And I I know I know I abused it and it was it was so that's why I really I rarely drink now. Yeah. Well, that's that's by choices. Mm-hmm. I know it, it leads to no good. It's as far as you want to consume, if you want to drink like a glass of wine once in a yeah. blue, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but to really abuse it and drink every day to escape reality, yeah, it's it's an addiction, and so yeah, it's a drug to me. Mm-hmm. It's no surprise that. The marijuana business is booming. Every type of industry turning their eye toward the green buds and the greenbacks, which come with it. Yes. It's a company called American Marijuana. Okay. They're producing some seriously wild vibes online. And why? Because you can smoke weed and get paid for it. Yes. In a job listing on their website, American Marijuana made it crystal clear. They're not just looking for some super baked stoner who will, won't take the gig seriously. It is 100% real and is an important job, which includes more than just getting paid to smoke weed, because if you think that's the entire scope of the job, it won't be for you. Now, it started, now, the American World Wanna started about five years ago, and it's been growing like a weed ever since. <laughs> now, although the job is serious, the gig doesn't take itself too seriously, even like crap, cracking a rap game joke. Now, American World Marijuana does make expectations clear, pushing perpetually stone talkers out of the running e- early and easily. Now, toward a person who partakes, how long would it take for you? I wouldn't even ask, would you? That would that would be a stupid question for me to ask. <laughs> how long would it take for you to apply to American marijuana? <laughs> oh, man. Depends on how much they paid. Oh, uh, I believe uh, I believe it is 36000 a year. And they supply the weed? Mm, And they're supplying the weed. Wow. And I, and I, you got to review it. It's like, what do you got to review it? What's the, uh, let me see. Um, uh, mm, no, it's, uh, like it's, it's a respectable take home for a job promising free weed in exchange for an honest, educated opinion. That's what I mean. You got to do like a review. Yeah. For thirty something thousand, thirty thousand dollars a year, thirty six a year, thirty six thousand a year, which that would break out to three thousand a month before taxes. And I can still do my regular job, right? Uh, I don't think you have to just simply eschew everything else. No. Oh, and, yeah. and 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 this is and this is not an April Fool's joke. This is not this is not one that's that I'm playing with you. This is a serious. All right, no, this is serious. All right. I, I I know you wouldn't bring this up if it wasn't something serious. Right. If it wasn't real. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, why not? Why, yeah. They paid and they supply the weed? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a yeah. pothead's dream. Yeah. All you have to be is 18. And you reside in uh, whatever state that you're in, obviously. Uh, and not just smoking weed, but edibles and CBD oil also. Oh yes, listen. I, I use CBD oils now. Yeah, it, it, I, I've it, had to educate it, myself on CBD oils. I did not know it was good for joints. Yes, yes. Yeah. It 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 has some heal. It has some great healing effects. It, mm-hmm. it, it that that's that's why they they have it. They don't want you to use 
CBD oils and all these because look where they get it from. Yeah, and it, and it grows so easily. People will be mm-hmm. buying, making their own lotion and all. That. Yeah, and 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 it, it heals. It works. I mean, it heals, but it relieves pain, and you ain't mm-hmm. got to pop pills. Right. Big pharma don't want that. No, because uh, they can't make enough money. The money. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> We're just getting started. Mentality will return. You have to learn to live with yourself before you can make a commitment of yourself to someone else. When you go to something that's already structured, like the church, I don't need to go in there thinking I'm the pastor. It's like already one set up, you know what I'm saying? It, was, it just had everything, but I learned, you know what I'm saying? I, I, everything I did, I learned from. So we look forward to seeing you same time, same place. Know that we love you, God loves you more. Continue to stay safe, do the right thing. Stay out of trouble. Conversation that informs a community. Brothers of Legacy, every weekday morning, at 9 a.m. Eastern. Quinn. Moment of clarity. I haven't watched BT in years. KP. Drake needs to come back with another triple platinum album. E Digger. And then you have Ray J. Like, I can't stand that river cricket. The Guru. Okay, the level of crack she's smoking, I don't want it. BS3 Network proudly presents the Knucklehead Chronicles podcast, where from car tips to hot topics to meet me of the week, anything goes live every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central. Welcome back to Mentality, the place where this show is created for all men with YZFM Cole Johnson. And earlier in the rundown, we did talk about uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. Uh, This story is going to be centered around alcohol, but basically the battle to kick alcohol. And it is centered around uh, Jason Ritter. Yes, the son of the actor, Jason Ritter, the son of uh, actor. Oh, good Lord. The late John Ritter. Yeah, John. It's like. I'm seeing all these J. I'm seeing all these J names. I'm just like it's not coming to me. Yes, the late great actor John Ritter, uh, one of my favorite actors of all time. Actually, uh, yeah. he was on the Drew Barrymore show, show, and the two of them had a heart to heart, and it's about alcohol. Now, what exactly was that conversation about? Well, welcome to Celebrity Style. <laughs> Now, last week on the Drew Barrymore Shore show, <laughs> Jason Ritter and his wife was on the show, and Ritter and Barrymore had a heart-to-heart conversation about a subject they both know very well. Now, uh, Ritter basically described that he was dealing with some alcohol issues earlier in the, on on in his relationship with his wife, Melanie Linsky, who was also on the on the show, holding hands with them. Along with that, Drew saw this and she said, me too. And the show then turned into, I guess you could say, an intimate conversation between two people who were former alcoholics. The emotional Ritter explained that his struggles with alcohol went hand in hand with feeling like he wasn't deserving of a happy life. And Drew related to that as well. Along with her own experiences, she said that she stopped drinking just recently, like four years ago. And because of it, she's been careful to be in relationships herself 
And she's looking forward to one day being in a relationship where the insecurities and instabilities of alcohol don't linger and hang over her head. Now, I will ask this to begin celebrity style. Um, in that moment, sobriety was being celebrated and being raw in its celebration. Why isn't sobriety more celebrated than the journey to not become an alcohol, uh, become alcohol dependent? Because it's big business, man. You got, you got all these, all these people. You got these rappers promoting alcohol. You have, or it's, it's if people find excuses to drink. It's it's just crazy. I don't. To me, I'm. I guess me having my own struggles with alcohol and dealing with them, I can I can relate. I, mm -hmm. And it's crazy because you would think celebrities got this wonderful life, right? And what do they have to be sad about? Or what do they have? To, what insecurities do they have? And we fail to realize that they're human beings as well. Right. And so just because they're celebrities don't mean they don't go through the same struggles we go through. Right. It's probably a little bit more magnified because they are celebrities. Right. And and so I could I I know what it what it is to abuse alcohol and and I know mm -hmm. what it is to not drink. I really I rarely drink. And it's yeah. by choice because I just don't mm -hmm. find the need in it. I don't need to to really do it. Yeah, yeah. And you don't give it the power. Then, and that, and that's a that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. I wish I could say I could relate, but I can't. Uh, but I find I find it amazing when someone can talk about. Yeah, I I had this this issue and this problem, and I found the will to leave it because I, I know that it was doing something bad for me. And I find that to be admirable for anybody, in, including you. I find that to be admirable that, that someone can do that and, and find the strength to say no more. So how important is connection with others? Because that was the one thing I noticed that leapt off the page with me when I saw Jason Ritter and Drew Barrymore talk and exchange and bond. How important is connection with others as you step away from from that former lifestyle of being, I won't call you an alcoholic, but the former lifestyle of needing alcohol to be a part of your life. But it, it, if you if you think about it, it's not just alcohol. It's different. There's different things. There's, there's certain things a lot of people yeah. have, been, have gone through in life that are, mm -hmm. are besides not just alcohol. Mm -hmm. So, but when you find that connection and you know you experience what they've experienced, you know how they felt it brings out this connection. It's like, wow, this person actually knows how I feel. Mm -hmm. This is so, because for, for a lot of people, they're like, no one knows how I feel. No one knows what I'm going through. Right. But mm -hmm. when you hear someone else's struggles and you can relate to it, that is, to me, one of the most amazing times because you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable with someone else. Yeah. And now you're you're seeing that hey, this person is going to through the same through same thing I'm going through, mm -hmm. and they're telling me about it. Yeah, and that makes you want to be like, hey, listen, I know how you feel. This is what I've been going through, and I've been wanting to find someone I can actually speak to, speak on this with. Mm -hmm. And when you find that connection, this it's it's awesome because you don't feel alone. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure with many, uh, that's probably why they went to the bottle is because they felt alone and this was something to cope with it. Uh, and yeah, I can totally understand that when you go on the other side and it's a scary thing because you do feel alone, but you see someone that went through those similar struggles and got to the similar place that you, that you've arrived. I can see how that would be like, Oh, I can breathe because someone knows my str my struggle and journey. May not know may not know the detail of it. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things in the struggle that 
I've learned with many, and like you said uh, in the beginning of answering the question, not, not just with alcohol, with drug abuse, with uh, with sex addiction, food addiction, whatever. Uh, you find the bonding with somebody because there's certain parts of that struggle that you innately know just by the fact you went through it and got on the other side of it. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Mm. So now we talked about it a little bit. I guess we can expound on it further. Why has alcohol sold us this way to unwind and relax and escape? <laughs> Because for the moment, it numbs it. It numbs it all. Like mm-hmm. you feel good when you're when you're drunk and you're not and you're. Some people say your true self comes out when you drink. Yeah, I've heard that. And so, sometimes it's for people it's liberating. They, it gives them the chance to be themselves with having a built-in excuse if they do something really stupid. So yeah. if they do something, really stupid, oh, I was drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. I'm saying so, but it, it gives them the opportunity <laughs> to, to kind of be themselves. Yeah. Then you get people like us where we don't need that to be ourselves. We can, we can see that mm-hmm. we can just be ourselves. We can. Yeah honestly just enjoy our lives and be us we don't have to yeah. conform to anything how can you be the best advocate you can be in dealing with sobriety how can i be the best advocate mm-hmm. um by just telling my story telling people what i've experienced dealing with alcohol and what i've what's going on in my life that like I, it's, it's it, it, there's reasons why I don't I really I, I stepped away not just because of it, there's there's a lot of built in reasons and and so it, to being able to tell my story and what I've experienced mm-hmm. it is is all I need that's that's that just sharing my story Mentality will be back in two and two. What do you get when you watch or listen to the Life Happens podcast? Well, I'll let them tell you. Kim and I are both ministers of the gospel, and the Life Happens podcast is a beautiful balance by simply taking our spirituality with real life and merging it together to create a beautiful balance. And that's what we do. BS3 Network proudly presents Life Happens podcast, where Christianity and life intersect live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central. Are you looking for something to do on your lunch break? Well, there's a show on the BS3 network that has only four words to say to you.
with AJ, powered by JM and E. Live weekdays at noon central. Welcome back to Mentality, where this is the ultimate masculine safe space for Wise Out FM, Cole Johnson. And we've talked about alcohol. Now I'm thinking we're going to talk about somebody who I believe is abusing it, but doesn't want to claim it. <laughs> um, there's this guy. He founded a sports vehicle, and he seems to pop off at the mouth mighty big. And... Uh, who am I talking about? Well, I have to mention him in the uh, the phrase of um, he's an idiot. But uh, I'll explain who that idiot is as we for Angel Reese stand in the gap. <laughs> Now, we all know that uh, last weekend was the final four for both the men's and the women's college basketball arena. Uh, The men's final four was eh, okay. The women's final four was more talked about. And why? Well, it was because of this gesture. Furthered by John Cena, originated by Tony Ayo of G-Unit. And this gesture was done by Iowa star Caitlin Clark, and John Cena gave him a a co-signed on it. But at the end of the Iowa LSU game, which was the national championship game last Sunday, Angel Reese, the center of LSU, decided to want to catch the gaze of Caitlin Clark, and she wanted to show her this. And this at the same time, basically saying, (laughs) not only can you see this, but you can't see this ring we about to get either. But uh, Mr. Dave Portnoy, the founder of Barstool Sports, he had something um, interesting to say. Uh, And uh, the interesting that he had to say was, quote, Angel Reese. It's a classless piece of <coughs> closed tweet. Now, there's been celebrities that have taken umbrage. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal, for instance, he he, he tweeted back to uh, Mr. Portnoy and so is your mama. And uh, Jamel Hill, former of East, former lady PM, now the writer with The Atlantic, she said, oh, yeah, I'll pick this fight F you. So now... I will turn this over to you, and I probably will just sit back and just watch you go off on this guy. Why does he want all this smoke? Um, first of all, uh, Boston. Because <laughs> he is a Boston fan. He's from Massachusetts. He's yes, from he's 15 from miles northeast of Boston. <laughs> Yes, he's a Celtics. So Boston, yes. first of all. <laughs> Boston. And <laughs> Dave Portney. Whatever the Portney, whatever. I didn't even know who the <laughs> he was until I saw him, until Poppy sent me <laughs> to, sent me the message about him. Uh-huh. And when I read what he said, I'm like, yo, this is a grown <laughs> man, 46 years old, mm-hmm. talking to a 20-year-old young lady. Yeah. And when and, and a black young lady at that because when yeah. Caitlin Clark did it, she Not was me. heralded as gritty, gamer, mm-hmm. competitor, competitive, all, yeah. all, all this, all this passionate, mm-hmm. yes, all that. And when Angel Reese does it, she's classless, hood, she's unsportsmanlike, yeah, she's a, she's the ghetto queen, she's a thug, she's. Uh, all this 
and you're a grown man who tends to have run off the run off the mouth and run and says the n word. He's been known saying the n word oh, yeah. a few times. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Not only is known to say the n word, but at one time created a show that actually had the n word spelled out. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can remember. It's bar. It was. It was barstool. Now it's gonna get. I forgot what the e. Uh, real. I think. It, I think that's how it's spelled out. But yes, it was spelled barstool. The show was spelled barstool. N i g g e r. And along with it, yes, he he is fond of saying the n word often. Yes. <laughs> Oh, and like I said, I didn't know who he was. I didn't. I've heard bars, but I didn't know who he was, mm -hmm. and I could care less. Like I don't, I don't plan on signing no licensing deal with the bar stools, especially if he's in control of it. Why would I want to be with a racist piece of? Shit? Well, like that's why. And he has million dollars worth of game is on bar stool. Mm-hmm. Why aren't they? Why aren't they up an uproar? See, this is th this is what I'm talking about. We don't stick together as a community. <laughs> this, is, this is this we don't we don't stick together as a community. Because if Gilly and Wallow were really all about the people, but I ain't gonna knock them to get in the bag. Get that bag. But it's not, kind, you know, of, up. kind of a cultural conflict of interest. You know, you have <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing, nothing. It's gotta come from the little man. It's gotta come from somebody who don't got because yeah, I got that's that's what's the problem. That's the problem. We don't back each other up. Mm -hmm. We let we let like this slide. Yeah. He should get punched in the mouth. Yeah. It's a grown that's man, 46 years old. She is 20 years old. Why is mm -hmm. why are you even why are you even getting going down to that level? With a young lady. Mm -hmm. That just shows you what, what a class this piece of shit you are. And she did nothing to him. <laughs> Again, this is this is like the, the other class this piece of shit we, we spoke about last week. <laughs> but but uh all right, so to lay out the founder of Barstool Sports. And the things that he has been um, in the maelstrom of controversy over. Uh, now, people hold against him that he's a friend of Tucker Carlson. Uh, I really could care less. Uh, I could care less about him they, being they a, made for a, each a other. Freak of... hey, listen, you, you you surround yourself with what you know. Yeah. So when you're a piece of shit, you surround yourself with a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I particularly don't care about that. I'm like, okay, do you, bro? If that yeah. if that makes you happy, fine. Uh, now, now this comment that, that it's centered around that, you know, it, it took me, it, I, it took me back a little bit, but, um, he's also known to say some wild crap too, such as when, uh, Kellen Kaepernick in 2016 kneeled, he called the Kaepernick quote, an ISIS member, close quote. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. Because in 2010, he told a joke about women being raped, and he said it following, he said the following in this way, quote, if you're a size six and you're wearing skinny jeans, you kind of deserve to be raped, right? Close quote. That's the type of individual Mr. Portney has portrayed himself to be outwardly. And... and <laughs> and that's because we elect celebrities to f presidents and a lot of them say stupid shit like that. So now everybody feel comfortable saying stupid shit like that. Yeah. Oh, and, and oh, and, and he said he he's socially liberal, but he voted for uh, for Trump. Similar to similar to what you just said. It's like, you know, I voted for him because I really don't care what he stands for. I don't care about his platform. I just love the fact that other politicians are absolutely crapping in their pants for him. And I'm thinking to myself, people find you to be a needle mover, but you come up with comments like that. Ah, uh, it's frustrating sometimes. 
how people just abuse the abuse the the privilege of being an influencer. But where's the where's the uproar? Where if I was all the black athletes, I would never not sit down with anything that no no show bar stools doing. I'm not sitting down interviewing with none of them, none of them. But they're not gonna do that. No, no, they're not gonna do that. So it <laughs> you barstool, <laughs> you Boston, and definitely <laughs> you Dave. <laughs> oh Lord. Anytime wise can go in on Boston is absolutely hilarity. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I mentioned earlier in the segment that uh, Shaquille O'Neal and Jamel Hill went in on him. Uh, I, I, uh, this is basically a softball question because I just want you to, to further go off. But were they too harsh in their response to Portnoy? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said a little bit more stuff about his mama. <laughs> they were kind of nice. They would put they put nice. <laughs> they would be a nice. Oh, there would have been some stuff that's been said about his mama. <laughs> she, hey, your mama too. Yeah, his mama is probably a class this side. <laughs> she had his. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> I, I see don't... why. I see why now. Why Vicola says I'm bizarre wise. <laughs> I'm so positive and all this other stuff on the other show, and then I get on this show, and I just rip people a new one. <laughs> I love it. Oh gosh, I'm like I, I didn't even think about it until he actually said it. I'm like, oh my gosh, bizarre wise. Lord have yeah, mercy. But, it's, it's, <laughs> but it'd be but but it'd be people like this. It'd be stupid people like this. Mm-hmm. That you can't help but to, yeah, to call them out. You gotta, mm-hmm. you gotta just, you gotta call these idiots out. Yeah, I. I it, the, there, there is an element to me that, and I'm glad you said that. Where's the uproar with him? There's an element that seems to want to not focus on this part of his critique. And oh, and oh, by the way, when when he caught wind of what, uh, what especially what Jamel Hill said to him, his response basically was like, "Look, I, I just basically called this person uh, talking about Angel Reese, uh, classless on on Twitter, and all of a sudden, it's it's an internet war, <laughs> it's a beef, I, and he stands by what he says." You know, he, he stands by what he says. He basically said, uh, look, quote, find me one example in any sport of anybody after a close game and find me a player stalking the best player on the other team. It is not sexist. It does not happen. If a man did that, he would be called classless and nobody would be saying anything. Close quote. Here's the oh, issue, so about, Mr. Portnoy. So, hold on, hold on. How, so, so when... Cause you, I'm sure you're probably a Patriots fan. You, so <laughs> yeah, probably is a Patriots fan. Probably <laughs> Tom Brady. But anyway, <laughs> um, what about what about when when Mister Class himself, Tom Brady, walked off the field without shaking Nick Foles' hand? That that wasn't ca- classless. Huh? That that well that was no no. Nothing, nothing, not at all. Man, please, man. These dudes need to shut the hell up. Stick, stick to doing your bar stool, whatever the you do, because um, Caitlin Clark didn't see nothing wrong with it. No. So why is someone who has nothing to do with the who, who that didn't play in the game Mm-mm. doesn't have a rooted in root and interest in it? Like, yeah, yeah. I can't see how you would have a really interesting Iowa or LSU. So, yeah, no. Again, <laughs> Dave Portnoy. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts 
from the throne. This is Mentality. That's why we here on this platform. Marriage. A loving splendor. A daily grind. Such is the case when Damien and Jamie get together and chop it up. For marriage is real. Just, let's just lay it all out here. Let's just be real with it. Join this wonderful couple who keeps it real and always in love. BS3 Network proudly presents Marriage is Real, where love is the only thing that matters. Live every Tuesday at 8.30 Central. Oh, and Jamie has something to say. Deuces and trades. There's a 100% chance of a laugh thunderstorm. Four men with different viewpoints take a movie, show, or documentary and review it uncensored, unfiltered, uncompromised, with no holds barred. Join BS3, Wilkes, King Doc, and H Rap B as they take on Hollywood their own way. BS3 Network proudly presents The Forecast, where h -Rap B always predicts, If I owe you something, I ain't got it. And if you need it, get it from God. Live every Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central. Check your local listings for your viewing and listening pleasure. Got it. So, so he said, "Look, I call her classless pizza," <clears throat> and off we go. It is classless, by the way. If someone does something like, if someone does something that I don't like in the game I'm watching, I tweet. And I think you're basically lying if you're saying that what Kayla Clark did and what Angel Reese did are the same. They're not. Close quote. Listen, I'm calling how I see it. Mm -hmm. You this. Like, I don't, like I don't. He, he, there's nothing. He the, my my issue is he's a 46 year old man talking to a 20 year old woman. Mm -hmm. That's my problem. Talk to a man like that. Say some. Say, I want you. To, I wish you would say Shaq was a classless piece. Of shit. I wish you would. <laughs> but you can say it to a 20 year old woman. Parker wishes he would too. That would be That's interesting. That's why I call you a piece of shit. And I say, and I say it on, on mentality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It is the same. What Kaylin Clark and Angel Reese did was the same. Now, it's a different version of the same, but it was the same. Because guess what it is? It is trash talking. But uh, obviously, you must not have been. Watching the same game that Wise and I was watching, uh, because when Angel was doing this to Caitlyn, there was still time on the clock. Now, if you were to see this at the handshake line, then you might have a point. And if a man did that, and he would be called classes, you're right about that, because that's what I was called last year, when at the end of a Wisconsin, Michigan Wisconsin game and people were at the handshake line but Jawan Howard was having issues with different players on Wisconsin and the refs in that game which it ended up becoming a fight because he threw a punch not only was he called classless but people was calling for his job and I'm sure you were probably one of them who was doing it So, so why is there seemingly this racial overtone to this backwards commentary of having a guy call a college, women's college basketball player classless? It, it, it's, but it, it, it wasn't, it, the crazy thing is just wasn't him, it was a lot of other people too. It, it was just a lot yeah. of other people that made, made stupid 
comments and you ain't never lied. But again, when the white girl said it, nobody had when the white girl did it, I mean nobody had an issue. Oh, no one no her had issue. It got co-signed. And the, and and when the, the little black girl did it, everybody had problems. Oh no, she's she's from the ghetto. She's 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 hood. Oh, it's God. uncouth. I think I can speak for wise when I say the following. Angel, I have absolutely zero problems with what you did. In fact, if you get the opportunity to do it again, because you basically said you're gonna be going, you're gonna be coming back to LSU next year, and you get the same opportunity to do that, please do the same thing you did this past weekend. Because we actually celebrate those who love what they do and are competitive. And that and if that is you, do you. And it's crazy because prior to that, they went after Dawn Staley, one of the greatest women basketball players of all time and one of the greatest coaches. Yeah, she's yeah, I'm about saying fast becoming one of the greatest coaches now in the game. Yeah. 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 And and they're basically saying that she she color codes everything in, in speech with her now. And I'm saying to myself, really, is is it is it this way now? It's now we have to focus on South Carolina being the 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 big tall black girls, and Iowa being the 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 white corn fed Midwestern girls. It, do we really have to do that now? Do we really have to go there? Why why can't we just act, why can't we just say okay, cool, South Carolina? Yeah, the girls may be mostly black, but they're physical. Cool. In fact, I appreciate that. I want more of that actually in basketball, men's or women's. It doesn't matter to me. And I would, if they had the if they had the means of wherewithal to beat South Carolina, which they did, more power to them. But do we have to paint everything with a racial brush? No, but that, and that's and that's and that's what that's that's the thing. Everybody is doing. Everybody does it to keep the divide there. And if you if you didn't focus on that part of it, it would disappear. But people have to keep bringing it up. People have to keep talking about it to keep it around. Because we're we're at the point in society where the world, we are being mixed more and more every day. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep. So eventually, we're just gonna be one. It's a, and it's crazy because this is the only country where we really have that issue. Mm-hmm. That it's that it that that its citizens are really separated from each other like that, mm-hmm. and all different race. All it's just mm-hmm. why yeah. can't we just come to the table and just be Americans? Just yeah. Why we gotta be? That's why I be I get upset when I say African American. Latino American. I'm like, listen, we're all Americans. Mm-hmm. Why why we have why we gotta separate ourselves? Why do we have to add these subtitles? Yeah. This is again this going back to one of the things me about labels. We just love to label each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I get that <clears throat> I get there there's a cultural thing. I get that. But you know, I I, I celebrate I celebrate you. Because of culture, you know, I, I know I, I know you have Puerto Rican roots. I celebrate that with the culture. It's not. It's like okay, well, that's a brown. That's a brown guy. So now I gotta act different. No, <laughs> no. If you was white, you act the same way. I'd be embracing you. If you was, and you was all the way black and act the same way, I'd be embracing you. But the, the, the crazy thing is, but it doesn't me, matter. It, 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 <laughs> Yo, my brother is blacker than you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. My nephew is as black as you. Exactly. Yeah. So what? 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 Because what? I'm a Thank little you. bit lighter. Oh, please, man. No. Like, Mm-mm. it's stupid. It. I agree with you, man. It's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. It's absolutely stupid. It's like, man. I. It's like, man. I. Because I, 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 I dig people's cultures you know you if, if if it's different than mine i'm like man i'm eating it up i'm celebrating it because it's something different and it's meant to be celebrated just like my culture is meant to be celebrated 
Yeah. You know, so let's get about the business of celebrating it instead of saying, oh, God, instead of me going, well, oh, why is your skin's too too light? I can't really associate with you. Or you saying to me, oh, no, Cole, your skin's too black. I can't really fool with you. What type of stupidity is that? Yes. Yeah. If you look at if you look at the audience of, of Snowman in the Morning, it's multiracial. It's it's just men who point. enjoy the show. Mm-hmm. None of us on that show look at color. We all just look at each mm-hmm. other as men. Mm-hmm. So it kind of frustrates me sometimes. When but I just want to just talk. Just this men. Let's let's stop. Mm-hmm. Black men, white men, brown. No, right. we're men. That's it. Yeah. Men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why can't it be like that? Because th- mm-hmm. that, and that's how that's how Snowman in the Morning rolls. Mm-hmm. It's we we have men of all t- race, color, cre- everything mm-hmm. on the show. Yeah, and audience members of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because and why? They have- we relate to each other as men. Mm-hmm. And not only that, they they have different knowledge bases. Yes. On the show, yes. Like I, like I actually saw a black guy talk about hockey and know what he's talking about, and I'm not just talking about me. I, why has this done it? You know, I mean, to me, it's like if you know something about it, cool. I'm just a guy who speaks do sports. It. I'm a guy yeah. who speaks sports. That's it. Yeah, let's do it. I want. I, I, I want to learn. Yeah, I don't. I don't care about the labels. I don't either. I don't care um, about that. None of that. I, I don't care that. Well, it's it, it's like, but we want to keep dividing it and making it. No, no. Just let's just continue to do what we're doing. Mm-hmm. I, that's why I feel we we should like when we when we fill out for stuff here in in this country, we mm-hmm. should not put in if we're African. We just that should not even be a question. Yeah. I agree. Should not even be a question. I agree, but unfortunately, that is just how how society is. I know, but and it's now to the point where I technically could check that now. When I uh, if I if I get a chance to fill out uh, my my race, not only can not only not not only can I check black or African American, I could check of Latin descent too if I wanted to because I do have some Latin blood in me. But it's it's now gotten down to that finite understanding, and it's like, why do you have to pre-qualify people that way? Yeah, and, and it's just ridiculous, man. And and it's just again, we're a society of labels. We just like to label each other, and and, and that's totally how they separate us. And. I totally agree with Poppy on that. We are society. I'm over, yeah, I'm over that. Yeah. And now, thoughts from the throne. All right, so I've already been roasting Dave enough, so I'm not going to even touch that clown right now. I'm going to let him be and focus on a little bit of something more positive. My New York Knicks have clinched the number five spot in the Eastern Conference. I'm not going to act like Stephen A and act a fool because I had faith in my team. I knew they were going to be good. I knew the young guys were going to go come through and, and – and beat Boston three out of one, three out of four games. Let's, let's add that in there. We've we've whipped the Boston Celtics three out of four games. Um. So yes, yeah, Boston. And <laughs> it's great to see the Knicks in the playoffs. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I don't care what Stephen A. Smith says about if they lose to Cleveland, it's gonna be a lose. It's gonna be a, a waste of a season. No, because no one expected them to be this good. Well, I did. I expected them to be good. But 
Jalen Brunson, greatest signing we've made in the last 20 years. Sorry, Melo, but he, he's actually lead, he is a leader of men. And I love that fact that he's come in and he's made this his team. I love Julius Randle. Great season. But Jalen Brunson, this is your team. I salute you, brother. Get us to the second round, and hopefully you can get us beyond that. I would love it. And that's how I that's what I just wanted to talk about on my thoughts from the throne. Because I just wanted to celebrate my team, the New York Knicks. And I'm I'm good. Yes, my brother fails to disappoint. <laughs> he does not. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Lord. Okay. How to follow that? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, this past week, and we'll talk about this next week's on next week's show, um, uh, was the uh, anniversary of Martin Luther King's assassination. And a lot of what I think we were discussing and talking about, I think would have hurt the good doctor. And I say that because he fought for us to, of course, be recognized for who we were as human beings. But he would witness somebody call someone else classless. All because of the joy that person was, was doing in a moment had to be disparaged by a narrative that's painted out there. He didn't die for that. He died, unfortunately, so that we could celebrate our uniqueness. That's the beauty of us all. We are uniquely made. There's a, there's a scripture that says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. All of us are unique. We're even unique to one another if we are in the same race. And I put that in quotes because we are unique to one another. So it's time for us to celebrate our uniqueness. Celebrate it. Enjoy it. Embrace it. Be at one with it. Instead of wanting to assimilate. Because I'm sure this is something that Dr. King would celebrate. You were born an original. Don't die a copy. And those are thoughts from the throne. And that will do it for this episode of Mentality. For Wise El Jefe, I am Cole Johnson. As we always say in parting, we'll do so here. Our secret technique is that we always speak with mentality. See you next time. Peace out. That's coming.